Thank you, Boris. And yeah, I'm very proud and honored to be here on stage and to present with my colleague Jan and now our success and opportunities of scaling LoRaWAN in the smart city Hamburg. As Boris just introduced us um, on this slide uh, once again. So my name is Daniel. I work for Stromets Hamburg. I'm the head of LoRaWAN for and in Hamburg. Boris already mentioned the, re <laughs> the rest, so I can give over to Jan. Thank you, Daniel. Well, also, happy, good morning from my side. I'm very happy here to present on this impressive stage in front of you the journey to the successful Lorovan history of Hamburg. And uh, as Boris previously mentioned, I have my background in urban planning. So in my before Zena time, I was roughly 10 years working in the smart city sector and also dealing with the question how to establish a smart and sustainable smart city. This was the main task, the main question during this time, but it was mostly a time before LoRaWAN. So we were always thinking about what, can, what will be the kind of uh, digital infrastructure solution for the city to fulfill this goal and success. And the key part, as I mentioned, is the digital infrastructure. And what we'll see here is that uh, LoRaWAN is the key component for the digital infrastructure for a smart city, so to say the backbone, because for a digital infrastructure, you might all know of it, you need to have different kind of levels, the device level, the connectivity layer, and the platform and services. And you see that LoRaWAN here is having the crucial role in the middle as a uh, uh, point of the question, getting the data from A to B and a bi-directional protocol also from B to A. But it's not only the technical components, it's as we heard also by the uh, previous uh, keynotes that it's the whole ecosystem, which is the key success factor to make those systems in a way be manageable for a successful smart city. But um, when you come to the journey towards a smart city, you'll have to um, ask yourself what are the important uh, questions uh, for being sus uh, sustainable and also successful as a su smart city. And the first question is very important is which, which solution fits for me, for my city, for my organization or whatever. And it's not only a technical question, it's also uh, an organizational question because it also comes together with a question, how can this solution be scaled in a bigger perspective because it's important to make the use case we heard it it's the hero use case to make it running to have the first big use case also when i have a smart city to be successful for the community for the citizens to that they be aware of having a city with successful digital infrastructure as well as for a company because they want to save simply money with a successful use case to save energy, for instance. So those are the questions with different backgrounds, but in a way with the same focus they'll have. And um, also what is very important is besides this question about um, how can it be scaled? How can it be maintained for a long time? So the key factor for this one is to have a flexible ecosystem in order to have this manageable. And the next, or one of the most important part, I learned also with having a long-time relationship with our partners and customers when it comes from the pilot to the reality. Does it comply with my organization? Is my digital infrastructure as flexible to be adaptable for the different kind of organizational formations, use case, and whatever? And how this was achieved in a very successful way with the IoT forerunner in Germany, the city of Hamburg, will show us, uh, will show us and you, Daniel, now. The floor is yours. Thank you, Jan. All right, yes, I want to welcome you to the smart city of Hamburg. For those who haven't been there yet, it's a city in the northern part of Germany with around about 1.8 million in people. Um, from my point of view, it's still one of the most beautiful towns all over Germany, maybe beside also Munich. So if you haven't been there so far, give it a try. Have a, we call it Fischbrötchen at the Landungsbrücken and enjoy the beautiful view at the harbor. And yeah, the Stromatz Hamburg itself is um, responsible for distributing the energy all over Hamburg. We have around about 1.4 thousand employees and 1.2 million grid customers, our annual distribution uh, value of energy, 10.4 terawatt hours, and entire grid length of around about 30,000 kilometers. Which is maybe interesting about the Stromnetz Hamburg is that we are 100% a daughter of the city of Hamburg itself. 10 years ago, almost, 
we've been part of the Vattenfall concern and due to a decision by the people of Hamburg itself, the city had to buy us back from the Vattenfall concern and since then we are 100% in the holding of the city. Our sister, the Gasnetz Hamburg, responsible for the gas. Um, we soon will uh, f um, have a fusion and from the 1st of September on we'll be the Hamburger Energienetze. And I want to introduce my um, presentation with a quote. So LoRaWAN is the DNA of IoT, providing the essential framework for a connected world where long range and low power communication thrive. So, I mean, there's a lot of information stuffed right in this quote and I don't need to go further within this, but what I like most about this quote is the author. It is ChatGPT, basically. <laughs> and what I think is pretty interesting about this, that ChatGPT is saying this based on the uh, information provided by the internet. Is this the result? And this is basically the objective opinion of the internet of the power of LoRaWAN, which is pretty interesting, I think. Okay, I want to take you on our journey, how we started with LoRaWAN in Hamburg and how was our journey and how did we end up. So it all started with our immobility in Hamburg. So the objective was to, to build up 600 charging stations all over Hamburg and this um, yeah, objective was given us by the city of Hamburg itself, this order, and we had to build them up and operate them and Pretty soon we, we noticed that we have a big problem of misusage of those parking spaces um, due to cars who haven't been allowed to park there, who weren't charging. And so our first use case actually was born. It was the parking space detection. As I just mentioned, we had to focus on this problem of the misusage of the parking spaces at the charging station. And we focused on the idea how can we solve this problem from that moment on, I had no idea what is LoRaWAN or the other technologies now part of the IoT ecosystem. So we had a talk to our partners from Zena, Zena IoT in Hamburg, and they just introduced to us a sensor based on LoRaWAN. Haven't heard about that so far. Seems to be interesting. Give it a try. Um, the other problem was we had no um, possibility to have a power supply, so we had to install battery-powered um, sensors. So that was the ideal solution for us, and <laughs> that was the reason why, and we still have most of them, we installed 500 LoRaWAN gateways all over our charging stations right in Hamburg, which is a ridiculous high number, I know that, <laughs> but um, it was way um, more um, cost-sensitive to have a network planning and to look for uh, stations for those gateway, so we just decided, okay, we put all of them into the charging station, which was way cheaper, and all those we realized with our partners from Zena right in Hamburg. Yeah, according to this, and even parallel to this, uh, my colleagues from the metering also started with the first use case. Um, they tried to have a remote reading of meters in 34 skills and 155 apartments, which already brought the next 1,500 LoRaWAN-based sensors in our IoT platform. So right from the beginning on, we had over 2,000 LoRaWAN-based sensors after half a year on our platform running the Element IoT. Um, and I just can say those POCs have been extremely successful. All of the things we try to, to deal with, they all have been fulfilled, our ideas. And that was the idea to come on. LoRaWAN has so many advantages, even way more than parking spaces or even the reading out of meters. So let's give it a try and think bigger. And now the idea was to, to found a smart Hamburg corporation. And how did we do that? Um, due to the extremely successful POCs and the basic setup that we already have completed. So we had our LNS application server, we had the network, we had the first batch of sensors. So um, we had a great basement to start and that was the moment when we talked to the other public sector companies of Hamburg and we just introduced this to us. Hey, come on, we have a setup and we have something great here. Wouldn't it be interesting for you? And they just said, yeah, that's great. Let's do this. 
And that was the moment when we founded in 2019 this cooperation of around about eight public sector companies, which made it so easy to build up our network in Hamburg because we have so many buildings right within those public sector companies. And the idea was to build up and operate one LoRaWAN network from and for Hamburg together, which has been the basement of our, yeah, completely IoT system in Hamburg right now. OK, that is the history. How did we get there? And now I will show you where we are right now. So on the left-hand side, you see this is the LoRaWAN network. I will get closer to this in a moment. All those gateways are sending their data to our Element IoT software right located in our own IT systems of Stromnetz Hamburg, which is a pretty big advantage for us because that is one of the things our customer like most about us. We operate the system ourselves and not in any cloud system located anywhere else in the world or in Germany. So all the data transmitted via the LoRaWAN network are right stored in Hamburg. On the right-hand side, you see a pretty small selection of our actual customers. When those who knew or know um, some of them a little closer, not all of them are located in Hamburg. So some of them, due to our um, relationships and uh, electromobility, um, they also use our IoT platform as a software as a service. And that is also a big, big advantage for us. So where we are right now, we have almost 42,000 little more sensors sending actively in Hamburg right now, and an annual growth of over 50%. So we started with around about 2,000 sensors in 2019, now 42 in 2024, which is a pretty great result for the moment, but I'm sure there's a lot more way to go. 43 minutes in our platform and over 600 gateways right installed in Hamburg. As I just mentioned, 500 of them in the gateways. They ha don't have uh, in the charging station. They don't have the largest area that they are um, transmitting the signals and the 99% coverage in outer quality all over Hamburg, which is pretty great for the moment. And 40,000 packets are incoming live per hour. So this is how Hamburg looks like when it comes to LoRaWAN right at the moment. Those are around about our 600 gateways located right everywhere. You see some images on the left and the right hand side um, here from the Hafen city, one of the most modern parts of Hamburg. Um, yeah, as you just see on the map, we have gateways like everywhere. But we still say there is a lot more needed to have deep indoor coverage to fulfill all those requirements but we are in a really good way, and our customers really love that about us. Because this is, this is an older heat map on the, left si on the right side. On the left side, you see Hamburg divided in 222 squares, and each year we are driving through each of the square and taking several measurements um, with the Adoinis field tester, basically. Um, <laughs> our students are doing this for us. They love this. And yeah, on the right-hand side, you see the result um, from 2021, which already shows that Hamburg is completely covered by LoRaWAN, and which is this basement for all other things that have to come. The potentials for IoT in Hamburg, they are big, and there is a big market that we can handle with. First of all, energy management. Second, smart city. And, first of all, and last one, smart grid, because actually we are a grid operator, the Stromnetz Hamburg. And on this slide, you can see a selection of different kind of use cases that we are dealing with. Some, some of them are active, some of them are tested, some of them are planned, and there are way more use cases um, that I could show you, but <laughs> that would take a lot of time. Um, so let's focus on just, on just some of them, um, maybe those who are being planned, lighting and waste. Of course, this is, um, those are use cases, ideal. Ideal for, for the for smart city use cases. We talk a lot to the government of the city of Hamburg, to the city of Hamburg, um, and then we are discussing of how could we now uh, introduce those use cases. Um, what could be a nice strategy to fulfill those requirements for this big city? And basically, the Stromnetz Hamburg itself, of course, focuses on the challenges that we have in, uh, when it comes to energy distribution. Um, we have strong increasing demands in energy supply, 
and we think LoRaWAN and other IoT technologies have um, a key role within this. So this is the reason why we are scaling this and thinking about this very intensively. And some of the use cases are just mentioned here below. Substation monitoring, as you can see on the left-hand side. Temperature surveillance of high-voltage facilities. Heat control in our office buildings. I mean, most of, them, of you will know that the heaters will run all night long and um, will waste a lot of uh, energy all night long. Short-circuit displays or soil temperature and conductivity measurements are also a big part of our strategy for digitalization of our entire electricity grid. OK, let's sum it up a little bit. Um, from my point of view, to unfold your full potentials, I want to give you the following advices. A stable and fully available LoRaWAN network is essential. This is why we just built this network for Hamburg. And I am, from my experience, this is one of the things the customers really need. They don't want to install a sensor anywhere in the city and just recognize, oh, my sensor isn't working. How could we now uh, solve this problem? So this is the basement. You need to have a network if you want to fulfill your customer needs. And second hand, you definitely, and all of you know this, you'll need a high-performance IoT platform that is able, and just Oliver and Stefan in the um, presentation before mentioned a lot of reasons for this as well, so I don't need to go in detail with this. So we are working with the Element IoT, and we're pretty happy with this, but of course there are a lot of other technologies and platforms out there, but they need to have yeah, all those automatically system vis visualizations um, and the going input and output drivers. So there are a lot of needs when it comes to the IoT platform. But you also have to understand IoT as an ecosystem of diff diff uh, different technologies. LoRaWAN is the, by far uh, most important basement for this, but LoRaWAN will not fulfill any requirements on the market today. But so you have to uh, think as a complete ecosystem. And as Stefan just mentioned in the presentation before, you have to create full service offers for your customers and focus on added values and return of invest because the network connectivity itself will not be enough. They want to have full systems completely working. And this is one of those experience I can share with you. And for the last slide, I want to go back to Jan. Thank you, Daniel. Always impressive to see how they made their way to a successful LoRaWAN city in Hamburg. And um, well, as I was asking some questions on one of the first slides about uh, how or what are the requirements for being successful as a city? Well, as Daniel showed, it's the solution, but it's just not the solution because you can it, because you have to think about what is matching your purpose and what makes you successful with your solution and what kind of basis and foundation you will build. And the way about the partnerships, it's important to understand that uh, as a digital infrastructure provider, you have to think multidimensional, also think how can I re um, uh, re buy, uh, resell my network to other customers, how can I manage it flexible, how can I get heavy loads on it in order to make it really good, achievable and successful. And for this one, LoRaWAN plays a key role and is the backbone for the smart city infrastructure. It was something what we probably dreamed on in the, my previous work before Tena as I thought about a very flexible IoT network which is providing real-time data for a city in order to understand the city and to drive the smart and sustainable city forward. And when our last point is saying um, build a network, it means just not the physical network, the technological network. Wait, I'm just getting to the point. It's a bit slow. Come on. Well, it's not just, as I said, the technical network, it's also the personal network, the whole ecosystem, and this is also a reason why we're here, because it's about exchanging ideas, bringing people, companies, and uh, different actors from the fields together and develop together real good solutions in order to make the city smart. And in this way, well, just want to say last way, enjoy the world of LoRaWAN, and thank you very much. Thank you.